Good morning and a warm welcome to all who've joined us today and those who are watching at home on Zoom. Today we are pleased to celebrate our Holy Communion service and confirmation for some of our young people. God bless you all. Now we have a lot of other announcements here. It's been served on me. Most important, there's going to be cake after the service. Yeah, so... You can sit there and wonder and just, it will be delicious. John, Marilyn. Good morning. I'm John McFall, Chair of Leadership Council, but you already know that. <laughs> Today, I regret to announce that I am canceling the congregational meeting that was scheduled for today after the worship service. The Ministerial Search Committee has advised me that the chosen candidate has accepted a call from another church. The committee has developed extensive expertise and experience over the past year and a half of its operation and represents a broad spectrum of the Wesley Knox congregation. And it has functioned well as a team. Regular updates have been given to the congregation of their process and of their progress. Countless hours have been devoted to this search by each member of the committee and it is fitting to express our gratitude to each of them. I am fully aware of the difficulties that we have had as a congregation over the past three years and the disappointment we all feel about this announcement. We have the solid support of Abiel, for which we are very grateful, and he will be with us until the end of November. Now I'd like to give Mary Lynn McNeil, the chair of the CERT committee, an opportunity to speak to us, and then Abiel has some thoughts to share with us. Good morning. Uh, confidentiality, of course, um, does limit the information that I can give you. However, you should know that your search committee uh, truly thought that they'd found uh, the right person to be the next minister of our congregation. Your committee is naturally feeling dismayed greatly and greatly disappointed that this has occurred, 
when we were so close to the end of this process of finding a new minister. We also fully understand how disappointing this turn of events is for you. We will be taking some time to regroup before the search can uh, resume and would appreciate all the support that you can give us. Meanwhile, today is a great day of celebration of Oliver's confirmation. Well, friends, I thought I should say some few words of encouragement. Now, this week was kind of a heavy week for us. A week of disappointment and a week of discouragement. But I stand before you this morning to say to you, everything is going to be okay. Trust me, everything is going to be okay. We will get a minister for, for Wesley Knox. And we will get a minister soon. But I also want to say to the search committee, search committee, you worked very hard tirelessly searching and you thought you caught the fish but the fish escaped it reminds me of my days in Alberta when I did ice fishing sometimes when you do ice fishing you can think that you caught the fish but the fish slips away this is what happens. So this morning, I just want to encourage you that everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. And everything will be okay. I said to John, I will not leave serving you and loving you and caring for you until such time we got a minister. Remember, I'm retired, so I can do anything I want. So in my retirement, I'm going to be here with you until such time we got a minister. So don't worry. This is a learning experience for us. So let me just read these words. Someone has written, when you encourage others, you boost their self-esteem enhance their self-confidence, make them work harder, lift their spirits, and make them successful in their endeavors. So this morning, I'm encouraging you to work harder. So what we need to do, Wesley Knox, is one thing. We need to come together as a unit. We need to be strong. This is not the end of the world. And I was speaking with a friend of mine this week who shared some wonderful words. And he said to me, Abiel, what we need to do is to treat this situation with kindness and respect and add forgiveness. Because if you add forgiveness, then you remove something from your heart that is heavy. So this is what we need to do. So Wesley Knox, I know this is hard. I know this is terrible. But please remember, I'm here.
to save you. And I love you. Me and Caroline love you so much that we'll be here until you get a minister. So thank you very much. Thank you, Abiyan. Um, I think we have a few more announcements. Kathy is waiting in the wings here. And um, while she's coming up, there's a reminder here for me to tell the congregants who receive a printed newsletter, your copy is on the table on the east side of the sanctuary. And any visitors may also pick up a copy at the same location. Okay, thank you. Kathy. Good morning. My name is Kathy Banks, and I'm here representing the photo directory that you may or may not have read about in the um, newsletter. Um, thinking that we were going to start a new beginning, but we are. We are, as Abiel said, together. And it's time for a new, um, new, uh, new photo directory. Um, I've contacted the company that uh, did our last one. Um, everybody is doing a photo directory this fall because they've been so out of touch with each other for a, quite a long time. So we've come up with two dates in August that I'd like to reserve the Friday and Saturday, I think, of the last two, two days in August for university kids that are going back. Let's get them before they go back and make sure that they're included in our pictures. Um, and then the third week of September, I think it's September 12th, on the dates are in the newsletter. I'll be looking for people that will help make phone calls or come be a host, hostess. Um, so uh, my contact information is in the newsletter. Each week there'll be another ad about that. A secondary ad will be occurring because Karen, aren't you anticipating choirs starting back that week as well? Junior choir, which means security. A whole other not topic on there. So be looking for security at the side doors. For those of you who don't know, a person coming in that side door, if we leave the door open for a kid to come upstairs to choir, the choir director can't keep coming up and down, up and down, up and down. So we provide security at that door. It's a volunteer thing for an hour. So if, you, if the spirit moves you, give me a contact on that one. Thank you. Are there any other announcements we should know about? Okay, so let's continue with the life and work of the church. Um, I think, um, I think that's it. I think that's all I have to say right now. So I think we're looking for Dan, yes. And so as we gather, we acknowledge that the lands we're on are the traditional territories of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapewak, and Attawanish peoples. We acknowledge the broken covenants and relationships as we continue to be a faith community that believes in reconciliation. We also light our Christ candle to remind us that when two or more are gathered, Christ is there with us. And when we gather in worship, we gather in spirit and in truth. Friends, the light of Christ. Now, as we approach God, join us in our call to worship. This is responsive. O oh Lord, our sovereign, you are majestic, compassionate, glorious, inspiring, and beautiful, amazing tender and powerful. Your name is blessed in all the earth.
Our opening prayer will be said in unison. O oh Lord, you reveal wisdom and spiritual insight through your presence in creation. When we look at the heavens, we see your vastness. And when we look at the seas teeming with fish and verdant fields painted like a canvas, we see your creativity and your bounty. For all of this and for so much more, we praise your name. Amen. Don't even have to ask, they just know. Good morning. We got something really cool happening this morning. We got three people joining our church. Oliver, Caroline, Martha, thank you. And what is really fun and interesting is we're adding to our church family in doing this. It's kind of like this here is the starting of building what is our church. And, you know, you can see a couple of pieces missing. You want to add maybe a little, little member here, another member here. Got a hole in the roof, so maybe throw a little cover in the roof there. And our, our, little, our little mismatch of blocks, this little church, oh, look, we even got a door here, slowly becoming something big and whole. So this morning, we get to watch pieces of the brick that comes into our church come into our church when we do the transfers of Martha and Caroline and the confirmation of Ollie. They get to be another brick in the wall of Wesley Knox United Church. So we're going to stay in to watch, be part of the confirmation and uh, the communion. And then after communion, we're going to go out for Youth Quest and if there's children, Sunday school. Um, and that will be during One Bread, One Body. That second verse will go out. So if you can just put a mental note in that. So as we continue in worship, why don't we say the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Good morning. I can't tell you how relieved I was when I saw the scripture reading today. It's three verses. I normally prepare for reading scripture, but with my foggy brain, I somehow miss this. Even though I'm the one who organizes the scripture readers, it's a little unbelievable. So as I said, I'm pretty glad it's just three verses. So it is uh, John 16 verses 12 to uh, 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak in his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said it, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Can you hear me if I speak here? Yeah. You know, it's Ollie's special day being confirmed, and Martin and I wanted to sing an Appalachian ballad that we have sang to him as a lullaby. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars. Bright morning stars 
surprising. Day is a breaking in my soul. And where are our dear fathers? Oh, where are our dear fathers? They're down in the valley of praying. Day is a breaking in my soul. So today, we get to welcome a young person into full membership here into the United Church of Canada, expressed through their participation at Wesley Knox United Church. The full membership in most church denominations require a baptism and a profession of faith. Confirmation is when a person was baptized as an infant and had their parents make the promises on their behalf, and that now, under their own accord, can stand in front of their community of faith and profess their faith in Jesus Christ. As we prepare ourselves for this act of confirmation, I invite us to affirm our faith together by saying a new creed, and I invite the youth to come and lead the actions as we say these words. <laughs> so I invite you all to stand as well. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Mary B. Howarth, and I have the honor of being Oliver's faith partner. I have known Oliver since he was a young boy, when he and his family first came to Wesley Knox. I have known him through choirs, as Ollie, as Oliver, through YouthQuest, and through family friendship. 
From the start, I have been touched by Oliver's joy. I'd like to uh, share an experience of Oliver's and mine. Recently, we went for a forest hike along the river. On a gorgeous, cool, and sunny day, Oliver was adventurous as he stepped out onto a plank in the river. He was curious as he said hello to a frog by cupping it gently in his hands. He was full of wonder as we searched for a rainbow when a light spring rain fell through the canopy of trees. He was open and grounded as he shared about his large, extensive family and the origins of his name, Oliver Max Ernest Horak. He was warm and kind as he asked about and listened to my stories, confident in his plans for high school at Beale next year, proud but humble about his accomplishments, which are many, and give you an idea of how stunningly smart he is. Scouts, leadership, climbing, musicianship, and engineering and animating a life-sized elephant in his school play. Oliver is a, an, a remarkable and a delightful young man. Among his many gifts is his spark. As his faith partner these past few months, it has been a blessing for me to witness all of these traits in him in the, call, in the context of Oliver's faith journey. Oliver has been a teacher to me in this time that we have shared, and you will have more of a sense of the depth of him when we all recite together the creed that he has written. On behalf of Wesley Knox United Church, it is my pleasure to present Oliver Horak to be welcomed into the full member of the United Church of Canada. Oliver, I ask these questions to you that you may publicly profess your faith that was proclaimed in baptism. Do you believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, and who works in us and others by the Spirit? I do, by the grace of God. Do you commit to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, resisting oppression and evil, and seeking justice, and witnessing to God's love for all creation. I do, by the grace of God. Do you commit to be with your siblings in this community of faith to celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, and love and serve others? I do, by the grace of God. Do you commit to the core values of Wesley Knox United Church, being spirit-led, respectful, and inclusive? I do by the grace of God. Friends, let us stand and pledge our promises to this young man. We will continue to support you, walk with you, and grow with you. With God's help, we will live out our baptism as a loving community in Jesus Christ, nurturing one another in faith upon one another in prayer encouraging one another in God's work. And let us continue in the words that Ollie wrote in his personal creed. I believe in the united and Christian churches and the communities that surround them. I believe in God, creator of the earth, the divine, and the protector of humanity. I believe in Jesus, the son of God, and the messages of his stories. Using these beliefs as a guide, I will strive to go forward through my life with compassion, kindness, understanding, humility, and respect for all living things. I invite you to kneel and family. O oh, Holy Spirit, we invite you to share your love and your grace and your fullness with this young man, Oliver. Amen. And so, Oliver, 
as a gift in your confirmation, we present to you this uh, teen study Bible, and it has uh, highlighted verses of special members of the congregation and some of the staff. Uh, so Abiel, Karen Schusler, Mary B, Cindy, Brad, and myself have all highlighted this Bible for you. And we offer you the certificate, proof that you have been welcomed into full membership of the church. Friends, let's celebrate. Yeah, grab a seat. Oh. Is that what you wanted? Now I take this opportunity to welcome members to Wesley Knox. And I'm doing this on behalf of the congregation. We have two names, Martha Lambert, who is not available today. And we have Caroline Kalima, my partner, who is here today. So I want to invite Caroline to come forward, please. Now, friends, I've been doing this for 33 years. Every time I move, she has transfers, she goes to a new church, and the minister is me. <laughs> so, John. On behalf of Leadership Council and Wesley Knox, we welcome you in joining us today. Thank you. Now, friends, let us just prepare ourselves for communion. Let's just take a moment of silence before we say the prayers. Let us be silent before God. Let us now continue with an invitation to communion. Wisdom calls. Come, eat the bread of life. Wisdom calls. Come, drink the cup of fellowship. Wisdom calls. Come, partake of truth and grace. Wisdom calls. Come, Come and be and enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty, majestic, and sovereign Lord, our hearts are stirred by the power of your wisdom. In the very elements of creation, you display your power and might for every soul to perceive. And yet, a deeper wisdom is revealed in the bread and cup. As we partake in these simple yet profound elements, whisper into our hearts and speak the truth we long to hear. Holy Spirit, Guide us into truth about ourselves, our world, our church, and our ways that we may be transformed. Open our eyes to deep spiritual wisdom as we partake in the ancient work of Holy Communion.
Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his friends saying, this is my body given to you. After supper, Jesus took the cup and said to his friends, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you. O Holy One, we ask you to bless the elements that we partake in today. We ask you to open our hearts and fill us with your spirit. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, friends, let us now partake in the Holy Communion. There's a little plastic. You just pull it and the bread will come out. And I will say the words, the, bread, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Now take it. Now let us open the cup and I'll say the words this is the blood of the new covenant given to us let us drink This will be a short and brief message because we had a long service today with communion. I just want to share some thoughts with you. And I chose as a subject of my re reflection 
our harbor master. After what has happened this week, after the experience of sadness and anger and frustration, I thought we need a harbor master. And I start searching to find something about the harbor master. When a large ship enters harbor, it takes on board what is called a harbor master. This is the person who knows the harbor. He knows or she knows the length of it. The person knows the depth of it. The person knows where the hazards are. The person knows where the tides and currents are, what direction they flow in, and how strong they are. When that harbor master comes on board, the harbor master take control of that ship. And he gives an order to the captain who steers the ship. He is an outside expert who is brought in to make sure that the ship docks safely. Now this week, as we sail through the sea of life, as we experience frustration and anger and wondering what wrong did we do? Friends, this morning, I just want to say to us, we have been given a harbor master. And that harbor master is the Holy Spirit. Friends, the Holy Spirit knows the currents, knows the tides, knows the hazards and the flow. So friends, this morning I'm saying, if we can just let the Holy Spirit guide this Wesley Knox ship. If we can just let the Holy Spirit guide our lives, the Holy Spirit will guide us to safety. Friends, I know this is hard, what I'm saying. But I'm saying this with full, full conviction if we allow the harbor master to lead us, then this ship will dock safely. We also know that on Easter Sunday, we witness the power of resurrection. when Jesus had showed himself to his disciples, not once, not twice, but many times, and said to them, listen, I'm risen. Peace be with you. You'll also remember that the disciples had locked themselves in the house in fear. But Jesus showed himself and in the later day said to them, listen, I am going to send you a harbor master who will take control of the ship. I will send the Holy Spirit, the advocate to you, and the Holy Spirit will guide you and help you. Friends, this is my wish 
This is my hope for us. God is sending the harbor master. God is sending the Holy Spirit to us to guide us and to strengthen us. So my friends, this morning, I say to you, please, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope because the harbor master is in charge. Don't lose hope. Have courage. Be strong. Do not be afraid. Because this is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us and to strengthen us. So I'm saying to all of us who are still doubting in their hearts, who are still wondering what's going on, I'm saying to Wesley Knox United Church this morning, the harbor master is in control. And this ship will be steered in the right direction. And we will experience peace. So let's hope that things will be right. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to guide us to strengthen us, to make sure that everything is okay. And I just want to say to you, this week I was sad. In fact, I think I was a little mad. Now I don't show my madness any time. But I was a little mad that this has happened. But in my sadness and in my madness, the little voice, the little voice came to my heart and said, I am always with you. This is what the Holy Spirit is about. The Holy Spirit is always, always around us. So this morning, I say to you, the harbor master is present and the harbor master will steer the ship to safety. So don't be discouraged. Have hope and faith. This is what I want to share with you this morning. In life, in death, in life beyond death, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. I have some card for gratitude. It says, enjoying peace and quiet to reflect on where my life is going and where God is taking me. And this morning also, I want to pay gratitude and say yesterday, I went to the region, the Antla River Watershed Region Conference. And to my really surprise, I was elected president-elect of the region. So I'm just praying gratitude that the coming two years I will be able to lead the region. And like I said to them yesterday, I said I will lead the region with love and respect and dignity. And I will also encourage the region to rebuild and to re-examine and imagine how ministry can be done in this church. 
because of the devastation of COVID. So this is what I say. So I, I pay gratitude to that, that God has elevated me to that position. So let us now accept our offerings. God of hope, we pre humbly present these gifts in recognition of the grace that you offer us each and every day. You have endowed us with great bounty. Today we give a portion of this bounty to you as a generous expression of our gratitude. We are compelled through biblical teaching to share generously in ways that impact the greater mission of the church. We exalt your holy name as we participate in this sacrificial act of offering ourselves to you. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now say the prayers for the people. Holy One, we open our mouths to you. We open our hearts to you. And we cry out, Holy, holy, holy is thy Lord God Almighty, the one who always was and who is and who is still to come. Thank you for including us in your communion, the communion of your Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our life with you rests in your love towards us. You moved first, and you have shown us your love through the life, death, and burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You have brought us into this communion of your love, even now through the Holy Spirit who pours your love into our lives. Thank you. You do not disappoint. Grant us strength and perseverance. Grant us the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Grant us the compassion of your Son. Grant us the welcoming heart of God. Father, this morning, we pray for our church, Wesley Knox. And we ask you to be our harbor master. We pray for Nosley Knox and ask you to show us, Lord, and lift this congregation up. Lift up to our communities, committees, lift our children and youth, and we lift our programs and outreach ministries to you. By your spirit, strengthen us. This morning, we cry for all and pray for all who have lost loved ones. And this morning, Lord, we pray for the family of Jean Provo. And on Saturday, we're having a memorial service for her, and we ask you to be present with us as we do that. And this morning, we pray for all those who have lost loved ones. And we ask you once again to touch them to encourage them and to strengthen them. 
Lord Almighty, we lift all the London churches in Ontario. May our roots run deep into you. May you bear the fruit that you intended. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart makes your heart to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone who meets you see the face of Christ in you. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.